Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Stephen King review. Yes, this is the same shirt you saw last week because it's the same day for me. But today, we are talking about Christine. This one, it's a pol this review is going to be polarizing. Um, just to let you know, I feel the same way about this one as I felt about the Dead Zone. So if you're a hyper super fan uh, fanboy of St Stephen King or this book in general, maybe click away because I'm going to say some things that are going to upset you right off the bat. Just to chase those of you who weigh who might get mad, I like the movie by John Carpenter more than I like this book and I'm about to tell you why. Yeah, so bye. <laughs> Anyways, so this book is about uh, a young man who buys a car off of an old man, um, and the car is haunted, possessed, or whatever. Uh, I have a, uh, a Thursday theorist on this, so if you've read the book, hop on over there, and you can see where I think Christine came from, or the entity that's in Christine, or the entity that is Christine, where it came from. Now, uh, as far as this book is concerned, I think it goes on. It's one of the only books that I feel this way about. People say Stephen King has this problem all the time, but this is one of the only ones, this one, Sleeping Beauties, and a couple other that I think are actually too long. Um, I don't care about the main character all that much. What's his name? Archie? Arnie? I think it's Arnie Cunningham, isn't it? Yeah, Arnie Cunningham. Um, that's how much I don't care for this book. I can't even be bothered to remember the character names, but he has, uh, he's a nerdy dude, um, and he, he has, his best friend is a jock, um, and it's that kind of relationship where the jock constantly trying to protect the, the nerdy kid, um, then the nerdy kid gets kind of cool, gets the, the girl of his dreams, that kind of thing, and then everything goes off the rail. Um, I, I find that John Carpenter's uh, adaptation is a much better telling of the story that Stephen King created. I like parts and aspects of this book. I do. But there's a lot of it that I don't like. There's a lot of drawn out stuff. The ending. Every, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Everything that John Carpenter changed, I feel he needed to change. Um, the the reason I say I've read this book at least three times, I've read all of Stephen King's work, except for maybe the most recent three, at least three times, and listened to the audiobook of all of them, even the newest ones. Um, this is one of those books that I dread going back over because I know it's going to shit the bed. Um, I know I'm going to get to a point uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm done reading. I just don't care anymore. Uh, to me, it's another two-story story. story. Um, that I don't think King does very well, uh, where, where there's the, uh, I, I don't want to go into any spoiler territory because I'd have to go into spoiler territory, but I think at some point in time, the book just stops for me. Um, and that's my head canon. Uh, same way with Dreamcatcher, same way with Tommyknockers. Um, the only two story book that King has written that I really and truly love is The Outsider, where everything changes about halfway through. Now, I, I feel like that's why the movie works better, because it, because it is one cohesive story, and the book just isn't. Um, my recollection of the book is very shoddy. Um, I remember two things about the book. One is on a toll bridge, um, and one scene is on the toll bridge and the opening of the book. Uh, this book opens terrifically. Uh, it blows along for the longest time, and then for me, once again, I just stop caring. That's why I like the book. That's why I mean, that's why I don't care too much for the book. I would still give it three stars. I think it's a fantastic book. Uh, that's fantastic. It has fantastic ideas. Um, I just think that John Carpenter uh, executed it better. It's uh, one of King's 520-page books, and I say one of them because he seems to have a lot of books, especially recently, where he's found his uh, he's found out how to write books like you know The Shining and all that, uh, like Pet Cemetery and all that, with very concise language instead of the, the meandering thoughts that he tended to go into. Which, oddly enough, my friend Josh says that's his favorite part about old, you know Stephen King, with those meandering aspects. And while I do love early Stephen King books, it is, of course, it came out in 85, and it's my favorite Stephen King book of all time, I still feel like he is a better storyteller now, that he says so much more with fewer words 
nowadays. And when I say I like new Stephen King, that's what I'm talking about. It's the uh, it's the economy of words that I like. Um, I, I, I value my time very highly, and if you can say something concisely, I can't, I just, there's going to be people like, oh, you're one to talk, you're not concise, I know, trust me, I understand, but that is a trait that I find admirable, it's a trait that I admire, um, because I sure as hell can't do it, unless in my writing, people say my, my writing, you know, blows by, it's definitely completely different from, <laughs> from, uh, it's completely different from the E that you know here on the channel, um, because I do cut a tremendous amount out of my books where some people have to add, I cut quite a bit out. Um, now, as far as, like I said, I give this book three stars. Uh, you know, I look for character pacing and dread. The pacing, I can't stand whatsoever. The characters, I don't really hone in on too much. I do like them. They're okay. I appreciate them. Um, and as far as the dread, I think the dread is the best part about it. But once the dread dies off about halfway through, and that's when I lose interest. I've said that enough, but how, what did you think of Christine? Have you read it? If you have, did you love it, hate it, feel male, meh, mel? Yeah, feel mel about it. Uh, any of those things. If you felt any of those things, tell me why in detail so that we can have a discussion about your own thoughts. Maybe you sway mine. I don't know. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Stephen King review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.